All right, what's up, roofing and contracting industry? My guest today doesn't really need an introduction, especially in the roofing space, because so many of you know him, puts out a ton of content. He's a, a leader in the industry. I'm excited to chop it up with my friend, Tim Brown, today. We're gonna be talking about content, all right? You hear guys like me and guys like Tim and guys like Gary Vee and Benny Fisher talk about the opportunity to create more content. So you might agree with that, you might not. If you don't agree with that, well, you might want to tune out of this episode and go tune into something else go watch some Alex or Mosey or something like that. But if you do agree that you should be putting out more content to build your brand, we're going to unpack some ways that you can actually get better reach and better engagement and actually drive business results from your content. Because I know that sometimes guys like Tim and I, maybe you as well, get sucked into the vanity metrics. And that's kind of how we uh, measure our self-worth or our business worth. And so we really need that content to be able to drive whatever result we're after, our personal brand, our business brand. So we got a lot to cover here. We're going to talk about three big changes that are affecting the algorithm today right now in July 2024. So Tim Brown is going to talk about seven hooks that you can use in your content to get people's attention. And then we're going to go over some bonus strategies if we have time today. So Man, I'm pumped to dig in here. Let's go, Tim. What's going on, man? Not much. I, I really appreciate you having me on. I've got that that new Shure microphone. I, I see that you're also a fan of the Shure microphone. So I thought it would be good to talk about first a little bit of like why to do this, why to try for get as many views as possible, and maybe what to watch out for. Like there's a chance that you shouldn't be doing this if you don't have the fundamentals covered, right? If you don't have your brand set up the right way, if you're not, you don't have your Google business profile set up the right way, if you don't have your basic social media stuff up. Like I think you talk about it a lot too, is that if you're driving awareness, you should be driving it to a hub. Like if you're going, let's say you went viral on Facebook, but then you, when somebody goes to your Facebook page, you have no reviews and you don't have any pictures of work or anything like that. You're kind of trying to drive some views to something. So you want right. the, the hub to be good. You want the photos of work and you want the professionalism. So that's definitely one thing to do. But I think you talk about a lot is that we're sometimes getting obsessed with views and we need to make sure it's driving back to new business. Absolutely. We all get wrapped up into that, uh, the dopamine of, uh, you know, getting the notifications and all that. So I know, Tim, you guys have been focusing on this a lot over the past couple of years with your video content, getting really creative. You know, there was some really uh, interesting ideas. And you and I were talking before we hit record about your uh, the number of views and how you're tracking that. I share that with the audience and if you want. And then like we can talk about if that actually drives business results or it just, you know, helps Tim to... Uh, Feed his ego. <laughs> Mainly ego. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have it. So come on, let's be real. So we're getting an average of 1.7 million views a week. Woo! And that's primarily on reels and short form video, though we do have a lot on, we, we include our YouTube in that. So 52 million views this year so far. Now, it's hard to like parse this stuff out when you're doing anything that's brand. And, you know, this is, I think of this as brand. We put our logo on a lot of, reels like we just put it on there and we say what we do roofing marketing or home service marketing or whatever right that's brand and we we go when we go viral god i hate that it sounds so nasty and what what are we talking about when we get a lot of views usually has the logo on it and it usually says what we do on it so and it's also usually in niche and i think that the principle there for home service business would be like if you went viral in your town almost like or in your state, like this is about, let's say if I did Minneapolis topics, even if it's not related for us, related to marketing, it's related to roofing or home services. So we're getting views from those types of people that are in the niche. And that's the real thing is like, I say the number one question in marketing is who is it for? You want your content to be hitting the eyeballs of people that could be your customer and anything outside of that, which sometimes we do, sometimes we'll go viral on something that's a little bit more for homeowners and it doesn't really matter to us, but they're like, oh, what shingle is the worst or whatever, you know, they want to watch that video too. And so we do probably get a lot of views outside of the niche, but we're always aiming for the niche. 
Can I just jump in real quick? Because I, I want to share that story I just shared with you before we hit record. So how this translates to, to a contracting business. So a lot of roofing companies have started podcasts, which is exciting. We got my boy, uh, manager John Cater out there building podcast studios all over the country. Big shout out. But here's where I think a lot of roofing company owners go wrong. I just had a, a roofing company owner reach out to me last night. I'd never interacted with this gentleman. I don't know who he is. He knows who I am, um, which is cool and flattering. And he said, hey, I just started a podcast. I would love to have you on as a guest. That's always flattering. My immediate response was, hey, thank you for reaching out. What is the goal of your podcast and why do you want to have me on? So I'm trying to ask him a few uh, questions like using the Socratic method because I kind of want to get him to understand that he doesn't really probably have a purpose for it. And having me on his podcast, I don't know where in the country he's located, is not going to drive business for him, you know? Like his local property owners, they don't know Joe Hughes, nor do they care, nor should they care who I am, right? You got to think about like, start with the end of mind. Like Tim said, like, who is it for? I think a lot of people don't think about that. So I just want to jump in there, but go ahead. You're talking about your your weekly views. Yeah, you talk about what is getting real new business for OK Agency on the video front. I would actually say it's separate from this topic entirely. What's actually getting new business is us doing they ask you answer style content that lives all over our website and answers the top question prospects have i would almost call that like sales enablement video and it is nice to have a video guy around to be able to create sales enablement content and then the other weird one and i pr it probably translates to a home service business or a roofer is like we do look useful to our partners and we do find ways to be useful to our partners by promoting them on our videos and on our channel and like through reels and occasionally something will go viral ish or get a lot of views for a partner that we've featured on a reel. It's maybe more usefulness to the industry. That's where there could be some more like, cause partners refer, right? Like, and we're useful to partners, they refer more. So the more I can do that, the partners like they like, they will refer us. And so those are the things where it could intersect with new business. Now, I, I did say there isn't a giant amount of new business coming from going viral. And if you think that you're going to be confused. So like, don't get it twisted. This is brand awareness. And this is often brand awareness outside of your actual customer pool. So that's where people need to recognize. That being said, I still like doing it, maybe partly because I'm addicted to dopamine and that is, is kind of what we're going to be talking about today. So we're going to give you tips on this, but recognize you're not just going to go dump a bunch of reels onto the internet and you're going to just get business back from it. This is kind of a nice to have cool part of marketing that you should learn, but it's not going to be, it's a little bit more brand awareness. That's, that's the caveat here at the beginning. Got it. Okay. Brand awareness, awesome. Making people aware of your brand. Uh, uh, you know, one of the things you want to make sure of is that you're making the right people aware of your brand. Going viral by nature, virality just means it's just spreading like like you have no control over it. So, yeah, while it can be cool, it's not really that, you know, you're not focusing your firepower there. So, and we're going to talk about it still because it's an interesting study. For a year, for a year and a half ago, I was trying to go viral, couldn't figure it out didn't know how to do it. The most I'd ever had was like 250,000 views about a pipe boot in the early days of Facebook reels. I was really excited about it, but I didn't know even about viral stuff back then. Yeah. And then, so a year and a half ago, I tried, 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 couldn't figure it out. And then at a certain point, something hit and it was bad. It wasn't like a useful meme. It was like, it was a meme. It was kind of a recycled thing. And then a couple okay. of months later, I went viral for something that was an original video. And then cool. now we've done that with like 20 original videos where we've gone over 500 million views, 500,000 million views. So, oh, wow. I had no idea. That's really, that's really cool, man. Good yeah. Deal. And the other thing you can do too, if you have other people that you know, one thing that we've done a lot is like we've kind of buddied up to some of the influencers in our space, like that already know how to do this. Like, for instance, for me, it's Roofer TikTok, Austin Blomquist. Ray Little, and uh, we we did mess with uh, BDR, Best Damn Roofer, which, you know, people have their opinions about him. I love the guy. He's a nice guy. Um, really, really good human at the core of it, even though he does these kind of outlandish things. 
those people kind of like we learned from, you know, we were buddying up to the people doing it well and learning from them. And as you probably recommend of like getting around the people in your local uh, market that are influential in the market and that maybe know how to do some of this stuff well too, because it doesn't always have to be on your channel for it to right. be good for your company. Okay, cool. Well, kind of gets us into our first topic here, uh, talking about the algorithm, right? So there's been a lot of changes to the algorithm, whether it's TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, you name it. They're all of these content platforms are constantly changing. So Tim, you identified three uh, algorithm, you know, platform changes that you've been monitoring, paying attention to. Let's dig into that. The biggest shift right now that I see is the, the interest graph. And this is like, you know, AI at a practical level, really it's TikTok identifying what you watch and then serving up more of it. And thus in turn, all the other platforms are trying to do it. Cause for a while there you'd go on TikTok and you'd be like, why is this content so much closer to what I like than Instagram? It's because they had this interest graph down to a science. They, they're the first people that had it. It would mean if you watched roofing videos, you saw a bunch more roofing videos than they, they were good at it. And now everyone else is kind of following suit. So you just get nichier and nichier topics. Like I could probably be a roofing manufacturer or something and like be on there and like see a lot of roofing manufacturer. Like there's weird. And, and it also gave permission to people to create nichier content. Yes. Because they realize, oh, now I can make content about clogged gutters and somebody will actually want to watch it or whatever. You know, like there's a, it opened up a whole avenue of content creation because it was good. It was pretty good at getting these things out to the people that actually wanted to watch them. Yeah. I love that. And um, I don't know if you guys are on the same page with Gary V, but in uh, Day Trading Attention, Gary talks about it as a TikTokification of social media. So prior to that, like you go, like you'd create a, a video on cleaning gutters and only like your followers would see it, right? Or people that liked your page, which, you know, for a lot of us is not as many people as we really want. You know, there's roofing companies out there that have 400, 437 followers or likes, you know, people that like their page. And it's like, why should I create content? Only my mom's going to see it, right? But now with like the interest graph, you can get a lot of views on your content, even if you don't have a lot of followers. So that's huge. The second one is having a strong opinion. I would say the idea that before we would want to tell every nuance of our opinion. So if I, t if I, let's say I had a strong opinion about the roofing industry, my strong opinion, not that hot of a take at this point, but that like you shouldn't follow gurus or something like that. Right. Like <laughs> I just right. put it out there back in the day, you would want to say, but by the way, there's other, there are some people that are really doing it the right way. Like I see these coaches that care about people and like, you'd want to not include the nuance at the end. You'd want to chop it. And this does have an ethical twinge component to it because unfortunately to give that extra context, would decrease your reach because for whatever reason, all the platforms love controversy. Yeah. Fight in the comments. Let's go. And so when I say it, like I was, I'm hanging out with my trainer today, by the way, uh, James is over here. He's telling me how I could eat better. So he just, sh he's shadowing me for the day. So, but he, his hot take was that people that are out of shape shouldn't be trainers. Now there's probably some nuance there. He actually did give some nuance that like, if somebody's like losing weight, that they might be able to, if somebody was like 250 that pounds journey. and was coming from being very overweight, that would actually, they would might be more motivating to the person that's coming from 350 pounds, right? So there's some nuance, but if you just, you know, if you put out that post about you shouldn't be a trainer if you're overweight, like that would probably, it would do well. And that opens up a whole discussion of like, are you okay with a little controversy in the comments? Are you okay with the discomfort of people disagreeing? At the end of the day, James probably does believe that. He's saying something he does believe. Right. But we're so, we've trained ourselves to not say exactly what we think because we don't want to piss anyone off. And the algorithm does reward people that are open to pissing people off. That's number two. Okay, cool. Well, if you're like me, you don't want to piss people off, but I'm very diplomatic with my content. So I could probably, I could probably yeah. 
think of a way to just have a stronger opinion and cut it off to try not to appease everyone. So maybe, you know, if you're listening to this, watching this, maybe you hit pause right now and you think of a way to implement this in your business. Cause I'm going to go back and I'm going to try to implement this in my content. You guys can, uh, you know, hold me accountable to that. So one way that Joseph does do this very well is he uses the common enemy approach on marketing. Ah, like, so yes. you can, you can go after like, cause roofers hate marketing agencies. So he can kind of put the mark, like ultimately that works. And that is a strong opinion. And you do believe that to give all the nuance every time would be very difficult. So what I'm saying is that does work. Yes. The common enemy. Yep. So if you're, if you're a roofer and a good one, which all of you are, obviously the common enemy would be, you know, Chuck in a truck or tank top Tommy or. You know, the, the, the guy that's just like, you know, the dashboard of his, of his van is, is his office, you know, that sort of thing that can be the common enemy because both, you know, you don't like that. And the homeowner is like that either. So you, you can bond over like, oh yeah, I know we don't want that guy. That's good. And you will maybe have a comment every once in a while from somebody who's a little annoyed with the fact that you're going after who they are, but you know, it's actually good for the homeowner to avoid right. that guy anyways. So you piss some people off. You still did the right thing. All right. Number three is mistake or cringe videos. And I'm kind of bucketing this together because they both elicit the same response. Like if something is off about the video, like if let's say if it was supposed to be funny and it wasn't, that's kind of cringy, right? That's cringy. If it's a mistake video, you're nailing a shingle, but you're doing it above the line for whatever reason that works on the internet right now. And what they would call a meta cringe is if you don't know if the creator knows it was cringe or not. Ah, yes. They'll show your cards. Okay. So you're kind of holding back the fact that you know you're doing this mistake on purpose. And this is one of those things where you got to know how to do it in a way that kind of elicits positive, you know, ultimate response, which is the ultimate response is that we want views. We want people in our area to know we do roofing and to like us. So how could we... Is this, com this is complicated, but you'll see it everywhere once I say it. There's cringe videos and mistake videos. They do very well because everyone comments as tells them what they need to do right. Yeah. And cringe, honestly, it's like mistakes where the person really doesn't know what's going on. But you can make a cringe video knowing what's going on if you pretend like you don't know what's going on. And that's, that's weird, but it does work <laughs> and weird that, works hashtag weird works weird works and unfortunately we are in the world where you can do this and get a lot of views if you want so i'm telling you it's real and whether you want those views because there is some nuance to the outcome is whether you, that's what you have to decide i'm not telling you to do it i'm telling you it does get views i love that all right cool Love those three algorithm changes, the interest graph, have a strong opinion, and then mistake or cringe videos. Let's call that embrace Embrace the cringe. The more you embrace the cringe. Embrace the cringe. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. And you might be thinking, well, guys, like, you know, hey, Tim, like, I get it. That's for you. You're a creator. You have a video guy following you around. I would challenge you to that because, man, content, standing out in a noisy world has become way more difficult. I think especially this year, like I've said it a few times in my content recently, I personally am spending like three times more time on marketing than I was this time last year. No longer can you just like, you know, get away with being consistent, which is kind of my calling card for a bunch of years. Uh, consistency is no longer enough. Like we need to get to create, it's creative. We need to lean into this stuff. So adapt these recommendations that Tim is sharing to your business. Again, you know, hit pause, replay this, share with your team. Think about how you can get more creative with your content. You might not think that roofers or contractors can get creative, but I promise you, you know, Tim and I can each rattle off 10 roofing companies right now that are creating some pretty fun content uh, based on what Tim is really talking about right now. So we challenge you to get out of your comfort zone. Guys, we're talking about marketing content. We're talking about being creative. There's a lot that goes into that. And Tim and I are practitioners of that. We do it day in and day out. And I know as a contracting company, it may not be something that comes natural to you. And it may be something that maybe you aspire to, but maybe it's outside your comfort zone. And maybe you really want to figure out this brand and this content, and this marketing, but you're just not really sure how to do that. Well, I've got good news for you because my team and I here at Contractor Dynamics, that's all we do all day, every day is we train 
roofing companies on how to build and run their own marketing so they can build that five mile famous brand so they can become known as the go-to roofing company in their local market. We have a couple different marketing training programs that we work with our clients day in and day out, week in and week out to help them build and run their own marketing. If you wanna learn more about that, head on over to our website at contractordynamics.com or click the link below this video or this podcast to schedule a call with someone here on our team to help get you some clarity around your marketing based on where you are now and where you want to be and how to close that gap most efficiently and effectively. So what's next, Tim? We have these seven types of hooks for video content, and we're going to give you like formats that you can go try now. All right. I love it. Seven hooks for those people living under a rock. What is a hook and why is that important? A hook is a way to just get people's attention really quick. And if you can kind of like get them to watch, you know, like in copywriting, it's like you want the first line to get them to read the second line and the second line to get them to read the third line. So if you can get them to watch the first 10 seconds with the first three seconds, you have an opportunity. And I know a lot of you are already figuring this out because I'm the first one I'm going to share is going to be a one I'm seeing a lot of right now. Yes. Love it. Okay, cool. Seven hooks. Let's go. That quick jump transition hook example might be like a a jump scare like the baseball hitting the screen but maybe that chemical maybe we don't want that so maybe we go for like more of the funny you know the person cutting the watermelon and then the water hits and i won't give some of the other examples i've been seeing out there (laughs) and the watermelon cut and then somebody gets splashed by water and it's somebody on your team and they're like if you got hit by a hailstorm you know Talk to our roofing company. So people are using that right now with the quick jump to directly to kind of a call to action, which I would say, honestly, you guys have been doing a pretty good job. Congratulations to everyone that got on that and figured it out. Because yeah. I saw a lot of roofing companies getting 3,000, 10,000 views that haven't gotten 300 views before. So good on you for getting getting into it. I love that. Where do you, where do you get those bits of video? A lot of times CapCut is where you'll find the templates. Okay. But you really, a lot of times you'll find them by scrolling TikTok as a user, kind of looking for ideas. And maybe it's just you, hey, a couple times a week, I spend 10 minutes just scrolling, looking for kind of fun jump cuts or whatever. So I'm going to call that the quick jump transition. Love it. Yeah. Tim talked about spending time like scrolling. I try not to scroll. You know, we all get sucked into it, obviously. But I actually have intentional like R&D, like research and development time where I'm literally scrolling and then saving things. You see a meme or you see some video, it might be related to something completely different, like the Olympics right now. And you're like, oh, yeah, how can I use that for my market? So invest some time into R&D for sure. Exactly. Number two, I'm going to say the man on the street hook. And we have actually used this one probably the most. I mean, it's pretty easy. You literally like, let's say you, you can go out on Amazon right now and get one of those like flags for a a microphone. You half you guys already have the DJI mics, the little lav mics. You can put your DJI lav mic in a little microphone holder. They, those are on Amazon, 10, 20 bucks. You put your logo on it, big and bold right on it. You can go around and go right on the street, wherever you're at and just ask questions. One that we did that was made on the street about roofing was like, guess what manufacturer you have on your roof? And like, no one knew any, then we're like, name one shingle manufacturer. Like no one knew. Love it. So the the call to action could have been, if I was a roofing company, that could have been like, you don't know any brands or singles either. And so choose a company that you, that actually cares about customer service, you know, and it's, it's the reason people watch is because they get a bunch of answers kind of quickly. The ones that have worked for us the most have been like, what's the, what's going to fail the quickest? Like what shingle is going to fail the quickest? And we've done like what HVAC unit won't last 10 years. We've done a bunch of things where it's like kind of elicits a brand name response because then people will be like, and in our case, we were talking to roofers or HVAC contractors, it elicits a brand response to them. They can avoid that brand, you know? And yep. this is scary. This is scary. I know this is spicy for some people. And um, in our case, we didn't, we don't have any allegiances. So we didn't edit anything out. We just left it all exactly as it was. And I think at the end of the day, you can find spicy, interesting questions. Even if it was just like, if you're a fruit, what fruit would you be? You know, or, you know, whatever you could do 
tons of different things and then find a way to flip it into your company. Like, and man on the street works. It's fun because it's action. It's fun because it's random. It's fun because it's almost like candid camera, you know, in a way. Yes. What's that guy? I'm trying to look up his uh, profile now. Uh, the school hard knocks. You follow him on Instagram? I, I don't. Oh, dude. So it's this college student, University of Texas, Austin. And he just started going around Austin and now other cities. And he'll go up to someone that gets out of like a G wagon or like a Range Rover and just ask them like how they made their money and questions like that. It's so engaging. It's really good. He's got 3 million followers. Real quick principle that I'd like to push in here is like, yes, like basically like if any homeowner would want to know this thing, that's a great hook. Honestly, I think in homeowners too, when I'm doing content for us because they're more likely to watch it and then drive the views for like our ideal customer, which is contractors. So if you thought about it this way, you're going after people in your city. You want to get views in your city. So if you could do content about the city, that might be really good. And if they know you do roofing. So like if I could get people from my city, but it's also like maybe people that were planning on traveling. So if I was in Austin, I could be like, what are the best restaurants in Austin? I go around, I ask people on the street, but then like somebody that could travel to Austin could also be watching. And the reason that matters is because even though they're not in our ideal customer group, people traveling push it up in the algorithm because more right. people, you don't want 90% of people to stop watching just because it's not about them. So sometimes you're kind of tapping into the broader circle to get at the smaller circle. Absolutely. I love that one for local local businesses. You know, I'm not local, neither are you, Tim, but yeah. uh, local contracting business, like that's an amazing one, the man on the street, because you're just, you're building that community and it's happening into different people and so many opportunities there. You could go after like insurance agents and get a bunch of insurance agents. It doesn't have to be, you're just running around in that moment. You could go, you could do five different insurance agent offices and then be like, whatever. I don't know what the question would be there. I'm going to go to number three, counterintuitive secret hook. All right. So one of ours did really well, probably one of the most, like it was like 3 million or something. Most original views on one original video, which is like why I wear long sleeves and pants and 90 degree weather. Yep. And I didn't know. So like, I'm just curious. I use my curiosity to the people I'm around and to somebody who's kind of, you know, representative of my ideal customer, I'm like asking about, you know, an HVAC client, you know, whatever. And that person gave an answer and, and it was like, essentially the, it takes the heat off. And a lot of, it's a question a lot of people have. So it worked. But what is a, like when you see counterintuitive things happening out in the wild with homeowners or, or even like talking to your crews or what counterintuitive for whatever reason, because, and then putting it right at the beginning, you know, we, we talk about the text right up at the top of the video yeah. that gives them, this is what you're about to see. So we always put those up there just so that they can watch it longer. Yeah. Counterintuitive. When I see that word. I'm curious. I'm curious because it kind of shifts your mindset, right? Yeah. I was thinking this way, but now I'm thinking this way because I saw that video. Yeah. You could put, you may think you don't, you know, you yes. want to wear short sleeves and short shirt, but I'm trying to think about something for roofing. You may think, what's a counterintuitive roofing secret? Comment below with your com your counterintuitive roofing secret. Because whatever it is, that's a great video for sure. Yep. All right. Next is the exclude people hook. So we're always trying to make this video for everybody, right? Example that I saw recently was like NFTs explain for girls, you know what I mean? Or whatever. Like, first of all, don't exclude me. I'm watching this. All right. <laughs> and then also I'll show them. Yeah. I'll show them by watching this entire video. Cause I want to know <laughs> what the hell is an NFT about. And then we've got like, for instance, state farms, new law explained for homeowners, a new rule or whatever explained for homeowners. So you're saying like, it's only for homeowners. And the point is, is like there, if you exclude more people though, like let's say if you said homeowners in the Midwest or whatever, you would very quickly, like everyone in that group, the tighter the group you make it, at, those people are going to watch. And it's also yeah. going to serve up to more and more of those people. That's the change, the interest graph thing that we're talking about. The tighter you can make it, and you can almost exclude people, exclude people, and it 
sometimes will work really well. The reason why we've learned so much of this is because we're putting out like two or three of these reels a day, right? We've learned a ton for like three years. And so I'm not saying that this is going to work the first time for you, but it might be an experiment. Yeah, absolutely. I, I like to just try to drive this point home by like asking people what makes them stop scrolling in their feed, right? Everyone listening or watching this, you know, like what gets your attention in your feed likely is something that's specific to you. So think about that, right? That's kind of the, the other side of what Tim's talking about here. Exclude people is be very specific to the people you're talking to. Absolutely. My fifth one is controversial statement hook. Let's say London is a very pl hard place to live. Or another example might be your insurance agency actually doesn't care about you. They, you know, like watch that if you have a bunch of insurance agents as referral partners, but you know what I'm saying? Saying something that could be controversial. I don't even think that this one's new to people, but you can use it in video too. I guess this isn't controversial, but an example might be like your gutters are probably backed up right now and they're probably doing nothing. You know, there's things that you can say that are a little bit more intense kind of speak to somebody specific and you say something that might, you know, you almost want a little what? and figure out a way to do this that still feels good to you. Cause I do think that there's spots where like people get stuck doing this all the time. The end results we really do want is for people to like us. So sometimes I'll use these things, but then I'll kind of stop doing it for a little while. Cause I want, I want the chemicals towards my company to be positive ones. Yep. I don't want to just be the controversy guy. So we kind of got to find a way to utilize this stuff. It's like a, it's like a alchemy, <laughs> you know, you're, yes. it's, it's almost like controversy is a little bit of like it's very intense and it's almost like a dark art and you use it a little bit to grab attention. But at the end of the day, what you want is them to love you and you to know that they love, you love them. You know, yep. we want to, we want the, all the area that we serve to be scared how much they love us, you know, so to speak. We want to, we want to get the good vibes going is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, for sure. One of our clients recently submitted like an ad, uh, idea to our team for us to review and he's a roofing company owner and his hook was, we don't want to replace your roof. And so that's, you know, coming across as a roofing company, it's like, wait, what, why, why don't you want to replace my roof? It's kind of a pattern interrupt too, because every other freaking roofer in your market is like, you need to replace your roof today or else yeah. your house is going to cave in, you know? And now here he is like, we don't want to replace your roof. And then he gets into the rest of it. But I thought that was pretty clever. That is a great example of this type of hook. I think that's perfect. Yeah. And I think that's also like noting that these types of principles work in other, like if that was a billboard, I would stop and I'd be like very, I, I'd have to read the rest, right? Right. So, yeah. I know you're probably curious as to what the rest says right now. I'm not going to share it. So perfect. stay tuned. Next episode. <laughs> and that is it. These, these principles like just go across all different things. It could work in a blog. It could work all these different ways. Right. Um, six, if this, then that. Okay. So if you're X, then you should probably check out why. If you, you know, use your iPhone to film content, you're going to watch this video. If you're in the Philadelphia area, you're going to also want to have your roof looked at. Like you can start to create this. If this, then that, that kind of, cause the first part, okay, I got it. Maybe I need to watch this. I don't know. And then you got to kind of deliver on that. Ideally it's something a little bit more, um, substantive, but the, the, if this, then that hook is, is number six. Okay. I think what works with that is that first part, if you are this, because it helps people identify as being a part of iPhone owners or people that live in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Again, people like to, people are going to pay attention to what it is that they identify as. And number seven is the wrong way hook. Don't do X, do Y. And you can do a big, yeah, you know, yeah. like red X over the top of it. You know, don't clean off your roof this way. Then showing the proper way to do it. For some reason, that really, um, that was the first video that we ever did that went viral was like, don't buy the cheapest pipe boot. Right. You know, and then I don't know if we did the on it, but you know, like we're <laughs> saying don't. And then we're saying, but do this instead. Right. I love that. I use that a lot. I would say don't spend any more money on marketing. Do this instead. 
is a really good one. And then I wanted to go really quick through my bonus strategies. So just if you got into the end of this and you're like, man, that was nothing actionable from this whole video, then I, I've got five quick ones for you. Fine. <laughs> Hold on. You're, you're a chump. If you're watching or listening and there's nothing actionable, we went through algorithm changes. Tim is sharing what he's doing, what he's been doing all year. We went through seven hooks. Out of those seven hooks, you can probably come up with 10 video concepts each if you put the time into it. Sit down with your team, do some whiteboarding, brainstorm, uh, punch some of these things in a chat GPT. Use that for some ideation. There's 70 video ideas that Tim just gave us. So you're a chump if you haven't got anything out of this. <laughs> I love right, that. So we got five, five bonus strategies, a little lightning round here. So I love these. I actually have not read these yet. So, so easy. Do a reaction or a reuse strategy. So we do reactions where you can layer on your face onto a different video. You can do it on TikTok live. You can upload the video and then react to it, or you can do it in cap cut, which will do a green screen around your face very easily. React to trending things in your area, react to trending things in your niche. And then you can also cross pollinate platforms. Something that's been working on TikTok may not be over on YouTube yet. So a lot of times we'll bring memes over from other platforms onto let's say YouTube and YouTube has less meme people on there. So we're just memeing on YouTube and getting a lot of views for it. And then you can just, you know, make your, the niche like, or the local area, a meme playground for you. I'm a big meme guy. You guys can take it or leave it to the double down strategy of video. That's already performing well. You can make a really good reply video, like spend a little bit of time on it, make it like, like a lot of, when we did the man on the street videos at trade shows or whatever. And then the next, I, I put it out that night, boom, boom, boom. I'm on the, I'm quick. And then the next day, I, a really good question that we were getting a lot. Cause one of them went nuts. We made a whole beautiful video, like well, not beautiful. I'm just saying we cut up a bunch of different takes of that question. Like another man on the street video with that comment, you pull out that comment and actually make that like headline almost for the video. So like people love interacting with stuff that like it's a reaction to their comment and makes it feel also like, ding, this guy like puts work into the like responses to these comments. So that's the double down strategy. I love that. Gary Vee, I think, stole that idea from you, Tim. I'm looking at his books to, uh, to, to double uh, check what he calls it, but it's basically like, yeah. It's just funny because I've been reading that book and it was like, I've, it's the first Gary Vee book that I'm reading where I'm like, I'm already doing this stuff. And I'm like, I'm a little bit ahead of Gary Vee or he, no, but he was probably writing this at the same time. I was kind of, you know what I mean? Like I was doing some of this stuff. You're a practitioner, man. I mean, that's yeah. where you want to be, but yeah, that's what he talks about is 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 that's where you're going to get a lot of insights from the comments and then you could take those and repurpose those as other content I love that subversion strategy so you could um so like an example like we saw is call me crazy but i hate store-bought pesto and it's like <laughs> and then people are taking that and shopping it and putting their thing they're like you know that's not crazy but this is crazy look at this chimney flashing it is absolute <laughs> trash great. yeah you know this is crazy you know, so you could take, you could kind of just like redirect attention with the funny little hook at the beginning, the green screen meme strategy, cap cut memes with the green screen thing yep. over like a movie quote or something like that on a trending topic that's working really, really well. And then news jacking strategy, maybe don't go into politics. We don't need to like get rid of half the customer base, but maybe do get into the Olympics or, you know, whatever. Well, now the Olympics are controversial. Dang it. I know, right? Well, no, I mean, that's leveraging pop culture is, is huge. Yeah, something I've been testing a little bit more. Taking a trending topic in the news and flipping it into your topic. That's news jacking. News jacking. Everyone can relate to that. So that's why. Yeah. So those are my five bonus strategies. We, we went through them pretty quick. I do think this, hopefully there's something in there for you guys to use and appreciate you guys, you having me on. Yeah, I appreciate you taking the time to lay all this out. And what I'm talking about is this Google Doc that Tim shared with me yesterday as we're kind of jamming on some ideas. Very well thought out. And again, you know, Tim did not grab this from Google or ChatGPT. Like these are things that Tim and his team are working on every day. They have been working on. 
uh, it's him someone that I look up to for content because uh, they're super creative and just trying new things, pushing the envelope. So there's countless, countless ideas in here. And, um, you know, don't worry about going viral. Just just worry about just focus on really understanding who your audience is and then just getting in front of them continually in different ways. Just get creative with it. So, man, I appreciate you sharing all these. Absolutely. And, you know, as far as hooks go, we study hooks on the copywriting side and with what we're doing for Google marketing. So obviously get at us if there's anything that we can do for you on websites or Google marketing. I know a lot of you know us, um, but we're getting better all the time. We have 100 plus Google reviews and um, I think we pair well with contractor dynamics. I think of them as the guide in a lot of ways for folks and we are just kind of muscle. I like when we get to work with your clients because you have a, a higher caliber of contractor that's working with you guys. So I always appreciate that they understand that they're getting better with their numbers. They're frankly just smarter than your average roofer. So <laughs> there you go. I mean, it is a really good symbiotic relationship and uh, most marketing agencies suck. And I talk about that in my content a lot, uh, but you know, hook agency is the, the number one recommendation that we have to our clients and friends. You know, no one's perfect, right? We're not perfect. You're not perfect. At the end of the day, like you're you're roofing or contracting company, you want to work with a bunch of people that are that that are they they care, and they're in it every day. And there's public accountability if they if things go wrong or if they screw you over, right? Like, yeah, Tim and his team are in the industry. Like his family is in the business. Same with contractor dynamics. Like there's a lot of like you know accountability if we were to like you know take advantage of someone, which we would never do, right? But a lot of it is just knowing that you're partnering with someone that really, truly cares and is working with companies like yours every single day. And that's and they're great at what they do. That's why I recommend Hook. So, well, oh, yeah. you know, people want to follow your viral content and yeah. also check out your website. So, you know, give a little plug. Follow us at Hook Agency on all of the platforms. Uh, Instagram, TikTok might be good places to check out these principles and at Roofer Memes on Instagram. So a lot of... We've also been, that's the thing on Gary V's thing. He talks about the micro niche pages. Yeah. We've been, we've been getting better with that. So it's like more interest-based pages. And so Roofer Memes is one that you can follow. We do a lot of original content on there. Hookagency.com. If you check us out at hookagency.com, we will do a 20-minute intro call with you just to see if it's a good fit. Um, and then ultimately, we do a longer strategy call if appropriate. We are kind of selective. We're trying to work with people that we really feel like we can give them a significant return on their investment. And if not, we guide them to other people. We kind of have that progressive strategy where we're like, if you're not the right fit for us, hey, this is another agency or this is contractor dynamics or something like that if it's not appropriate based on their situation. Love that. Being a true trusted advisor. That's one of our core values. So, man, I appreciate your time, Tim. Thanks for laying all that out. Thanks for sharing uh, a little bit about how the sausage is made there at uh, Hook Agency and in your content and sharing all these tips with contractors. So looking forward to getting this out to our market, man. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for watching. See ya.